Pakistan bans Wikipedia for blasphemous content. It's a little too on the nose. You know what I mean? It's like you expect this kind of thing, but at the same time, you're like, wow, you're really going to go this far. But let's get into yeah. it. Let's talk about what happened. Signaling like we're anti-knowledge, basically. That's how yeah. it sounds like. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So what happened? On February 3rd, Pakistan's Telecommunications Agency, or PTA for short, excuse me, Telecommunications Authority, the PTA, blocked Wikipedia and its other projects in Pakistan over exact over accusations of not removing allegedly sacrilegious content. Wikimedia Foundation revealed that they received a notification from the Pakistani authorities on February 1st, saying that their services have been, quote, degraded for 48 hours after failing to remove, quote unquote, unlawful content. Then, despite not communicating what the supposed offensive content was so that Wikipedia could take appropriate action, the warning was extended into a total ban. The move was heavily criticized on social media, arguing that the ban was regressive. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif ordered the government to restore Wikipedia's services at, um, restore Wikipedia's services on February 6th. The ban was lifted after three days. The Wikimedia Foundation expressed its gratitude by saying that the lifting the ban quote, means that the people of Pakistan can continue to benefit from and participate in the growth of a global movement to spread and share knowledge that is verified, reliable, and free. Many Pakistani users express their embarrassment at their government's actions. Aww, I'm sorry, guys. Don't be embarrassed. It's not you, okay? Again, guys, it's not, it makes no sense to be pr proud or embarrassed of what people who are other people who are um you know share the same country with you do you're only responsible for the things you have done okay so pride and shame for by association does not make any sense so don't if you're pakistani don't be ashamed of this it wasn't you okay but yeah but this is ridiculous this is absolutely ridiculous um i mean it's good like let's give credit they did they did undo it so there's some sanity there I know. And what I find very interesting is so the PTA, the Pakistan, uh, Pakistani Tele Telecommunications Authority is like if you've ever made a tweet on Twitter that was blasphemous or mocking Muhammad or posting a Charlie Hebdo cartoon and you get a notice that this tweet is illegal in Pakistan and is going to be there's like a complaint that was filed and it's going to be removed for a Pakistani audience. The body that's responsible for making that happen, sending you those notifications on Twitter that your tweets got banned, that's the PTA. That's the, what they do. They control. So when you hear, when we hear ridiculous things about an ad campaign that got banned from some very bizarre interpretation of it being blasphemous or movies and stuff, this is all the PTA. We've, we've talked about essentially what they've been doing for a very long time. But this is taking it to a whole different level. This is taking it to a whole different level. Like, what, by, uh, to be clear, by their standards, there genuinely is a lot of sacrilegious things on Wikipedia. By their like standards, what? certainly. Yeah. Like what? I don't know. Like the yeah. theory of evolution? Oh, yes. Like, or, explaining yeah. who, uh, what Salman Rushdie did? Maybe what's blasphemous is the synopsis of the satanic verses. Maybe what's blasphemous is um, the article that's about the artwork called Piss Christ. That's blasphemous for Muslims too, technically. Maybe maybe it's the information that they have on um, on Wikipedia about the Ahmadiyya. That's what I look what I. Look, you we think you like, you know, I was like looking at this but they exactly. They didn't even tell Wikipedia. They didn't even tell Wikipedia what was blasphemous. I think they this just is said the you main have one. unlawful content here and if you don't take action, we're going to ban you in 2 days. They didn't even tell them how to correct the quote unquote mistake and then went ahead and banned them. And Wikipedia put out a very That's... thoughtful statement about how this is denying knowledge to the world fifth most populous country 
Hmm. I I do think all the Wikipedia articles aside, all of them, all the problematic articles aside uh, on one side, the Ahmadiyya page on one side, the main issue would be the Ahmadiyya page. This is the page that I think the Pakistan government would have the most issue with, especially, especially because I see Muslim here. This is claiming. Uh, this is claiming that Ahmadiyyas are Muslim. I don't yeah. think. Look, it's even it's even saying that it's an is it's an Islamic revival movement. Oh my God! Are new. Oh my God! I'm so feeling look, talk theory right now. <laughs> yeah. So this is. I think this is the most sensitive page on Wikipedia in Pakistan. So if yeah. you want to learn, if you want to learn about Ahmadiyya and to see whether or not they are actually Muslim or not, and if you refer to Wikipedia, that is against the laws of Pakistan to recognize. Guys, in Pakistan, they have this is such a sensitive issue that you can't even get your passport unless you recognize that Ahmadiyya Ahmadiyyas are not Muslim. So it's a constitutional you... amendment that the yes. state made to declare that they are not Muslim. The state. Yeah. The national project of Pakistan is invested in Takfiri and Ahmadis. Yeah, so so you, you can be a non-Muslim and you can get your passport. So it's not you have to be Muslim and accept Islam, but you have to accept that the Ahmadis are not Muslim. You have to testify that you agree or else you're not going to get your passport. Even if you go online application for your passport, there's a checkbox that you agree that Ahmadis are not Muslim. <laughs> Oh God, that's so obsessive that there these people are do not be Muslims, and then then you get your passport. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous thing ever. God damn it! In the that's Pakistani some... passport, this is also a fun fact. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe in like one of the front pages of the Pakistani passport, it says this passport is like recognized in all countries except Israel. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, but I still think, yeah, yeah. that's a detraction. I want to I want to get back to something more important. And this news made me think about something in general. And I want to make a broader point about something. Why we talk about blasphemy a lot. There are a lot of reasons why blasphemy is important. And sometimes we talk about it through the lens of supposed offense. But I want to talk about it through the lens of something much broader and possibly more important. What we need to consider in instances like this is that essentially all scientific advancement began as blasphemies. Because basically all scientific advancement runs contrary to the so-called perfect words of God that came down from us, down to us thousands of years ago, right? And so it is necessary not only just for our own free expression, but actually for advancing our prosperity as a human species, that we have the free expression to question and to criticize and to investigate things that we need to have a better understanding of. There shouldn't be things that are held sacred above all else that we are not allowed to criticize because it is too sacred to examine. Like it is, it is literally necessary for scientific advancement. Yeah, Higgs boson right here is saying Copernicus was a blasphemer. Galileo was a blasphemer. And so the issue of blasphemy does not merely extend to, oh, I just want to say something, but people find it a bit taboo, socially taboo. But it extends to the level of what knowledge do people deign us ready or allow us to seek. And the Pakistani Telecommunications Authority wanted to take away the world's largest source of free knowledge away from the world's fifth most largest populous country. And considering, I didn't even think about this until right now, 
considering the level of I'm not even, I'm not even, I'm really serious. The level of severe difficulty that Pakistan is facing right now on so many different levels, I can't even name them right now. That this is a priority. You know, it just, it's reflective of a larger problem. Armin, what do you think? No, that's I, I agree with everything you said, and to put and also Katie is uh, pointing out technically Muhammad was also a blasphemer against all those pagan mm -hmm. religions uh, in the mm -hmm. in this time. Yeah, no, that was that's pretty that's pretty good. Let's all blaspheme yeah. exactly, Norman. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was also, like, Susie is pissed. I am pissed because like last year, correct me if I'm wrong, like up to a third of Pakistan was underwater last year. That level of damage literally will not be recovered for possibly like at least a century. The levels of inflation that Pakistanis are experiencing right now is so severe and threatening to people's livelihoods. Like the, and then not even to mention that the Pakistani Taliban is like devastating Peshawar and like coming back and that's a whole other issue. Like I have so I have like genuine sympathy for the nation and what people are going through. It's like, can we just focus on that instead of preventing people from gaining knowledge that would enable the populace to be better equipped to handle these large scale problems we're facing as a nation? I mean, come on. I just want better. I this is this is why I get frustrated because I want better for the Pakistani people. That's why. Well, yeah, I love your passion about it. So thank you for that. Oh well, thank you. <laughs> I think that's what we need to get people to understand how important this is. By the way, I ask Ch uh, ChatGPT right now if Ahmadis are Muslims. Do you want to see? Oh, oh we're gonna get juicy. All right, so ChatGPT responded, Ahmadiyya is a religious. So I asked him, Are Ahmadis Muslims? So ChatGPT responds, Ahmadiyya is a religious movement that originated in the late 19th century in the Indian subcontinent and considered itself to be a Muslim community. However, many mainstream Muslim organizations and scholars do not recognize Ahmadis as Muslims. And there is an there is ongoing debate and controversy within the Muslim community about the status of Ahmadiyya. It is important to note that the, that the determination of who is and who is not a Muslim is a complex and, a, and sensitive issue that involves religious, uh, social, and cultural factors, and ultimately individual beliefs and self-identification. Uh, as an AI language model, I do not take any position on religious matters. <laughs> so he was just washing his hands off of it. Uh, and my goal, and my goal is to provide a neutral and accurate information. Okay, so would, I don't. This is seems like a cop out. Like I could ask it, what do you think about genocide? Would you would it say that? No. Here's what? a quick question. Ask it. Hmm. Ask it. Are Salafis Muslims? Are um, Salafis uh, Salafism is a conservative and strict interpretation of Sunni Islam that emphasizes a return to the practices and beliefs of the earliest generous uh, generations of Muslims known as the Salaf. Okay, just give me the answer. Salafis consider themselves to be Muslims and their beliefs and practices are generally recognized as being within the mainstream of Sunni Islam. However, there so the are different degrees. Yes. Huh? Yes, yes. The answer is yes. It says, oh, there's different degrees of adherence, but that still means the answer is yes. Well, it's, it says, however, there are different degrees of adherence to Salafism, and some groups and individuals who identify as Salafis have been associated with extremist and militant views and actions, which are rejected by the vast majority of Muslims and are not considered to be representative of mainstream Islamic beliefs and practices. 
Uh, as with any religious movement or de denomination, there is a wide range of diversity and interpretation within Salafism, and it is important to avoid generalizations and stereotypes when referring to individuals or groups uh, who identify self. Yeah, so basically, uh, yeah, they have a different ranges of beliefs and stuff, and some of their ideas, but the, the answer is like they are Muslim. Okay, so yeah. ChatGPT is not so sure about Ahmadis being Muslim, but it's sure about, but it's sure about mean, Salaf is, Salaf I'm is not being I'm not sure. Muslim. I'm not sure. I, I, I have no opinions about Ahmadis. I'm just an AI, AI, you know, who, who am I to tell? This is sensible. Salafis, they are Muslim. <laughs> ChatGPT is like, I would still like to be able to get use in Pakistan, so I'm not going to answer this question. Well, I mean, that was, no, no, wait a minute. The Pakistan answer is still good enough for you to not be accepted. Like, the answer is not a straight up, I mean, as much as we don't like this answer either, but Pakistan is not going to answer like this answer either. That, because the answer to the question. Oh, wait, the yeah, the answer is, should be firmly no. A definite no, not like, oh, there's a debate about this. this it should be a, a no followed with how dare you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh my god. First of all, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, we're gonna have so much fun with AI asking AI stuff. And like we wonder and we could compare like as we get more competition with ChatGPT, we could be asking different questions. Oh, by the way, me and Harris did a test on the on secular jihad. But get, by, by the way, guys, if you're not subscribed to secular jihadists, go subscribe there. Facts. Um yeah, but me and Harris did a test, right? So we asked whether Muhammad, for example, is racist. Uh, and obviously the answer it was like, no, right? And then we said, well, what if Muhammad said this? If Muhammad like says this, would that make him racist? And then it would still defend Muhammad. But then we will just put the statement without Muhammad. And we're like, is this statement racist? And we'll be like, yeah, of course this is racist. <laughs> so if you just say, if Muhammad said this would it be racist it was like nope but then if you take muhammad out and just put the statement there and like is this statement racist it would say yes so wow it could be we could be talking about muhammad hijab no There's no a lot i of recognize that we're talking no then it's defending oh. all muhammad's <laughs> not just for a prophet muhammad <laughs> so, i no. guess so i have questions <laughs> no, no. No, we asked it in a way I think that was clear that we're talking about Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. It's, no, I'm yeah. kidding. And it builds upon your previous questions in a conversation, so it knows the context. Um, yeah. but you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.